Can we put Star Trek Next Generation? But I mean, Star Wars, I mean, that's like asking my kid or my husband. Dang. Okay, I, I mean, I am a Star Trek Next Generation nut. I loved everything about it. So I'm going to go there. Mind of my mind, um, Clay Ark. I mean, I am, when she died, I was, they called me and was like, you might need to sit down. I mean, she was brilliant. I mean, brilliant woman. I mean, but that, um, just the pyrokinesis, telekinesis, all of that stuff. And just from her starting way back in Africa, you know, to come to, you know, modern age. And then to add the clay arc within the story, I'm like, you better stop. And, and, you know, the, the books were so small. And I would be like, I need for the books um, to be, like, massive. And then the other, I, I can't remember her other series, but it was about the aliens. They come down and, and, and re-nurture them. Yes, that was brilliant, too. I, I thought that was one of my favorite stories. I loved it. I ate up everything that she did. Science fiction on TV. I like, me and my sister love cartoons. We love the graphic, you know, the graphic novels, even everything from Eon Flex to, you know, Wolverine and the Hulk. I mean, I love, I love cartoons still. And then I mean, but the cartoons nowadays are a little bit adult cartoons. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I do like anime. I, and I like American anime, too. I like the way, you know, they make it more human. You know, it's, it's less about the art and more about, you know, the character and what's going on and how can we blow these people up. And I mean, X-Men. I love any X-Men. I, I like the, even the bad cartoons. But the, the 90s, the early 2000 X-Men, the 90 cartoons, those were pretty dope. I mean, everywhere. I love audiobooks. I mean, and one of the greatest audiobook, um, you know, actresses is Laurel Merlington. I kind of got into her. But the first one I read was Malcolm Gladwell with The Outliers. That was the first audiobook I had to... I had a paper to write and I was just like, oh, let me get the audiobook. And I fell in love with them. I love audiobooks. For me, it's like you make your mind daydream. You know, you get to you get more control over what you're seeing, you know, in your own head. You know, the cinematographer's fired and everyone else, you know, is is fired. So you get to do it all yourself. But I mean, I of course I love science. I, Robert Jordan's Will of Time. I mean, I loved that audio book. Um, I couldn't. When Brandon Sanderson started writing, uh, Lord, Robert Jordan died. And then, um, you know, his wife, Harry McDougal, wanted to get somebody to write it. And it took forever for it to come out. And I was like, I couldn't wait to get that audio book. I mean, I love audio books. But, yeah, you could get some, you could get some duds as far as the... Um, you know, the orator's concern. I mean, I think it's great. You know, um, it's funny. I, on a, you know, I'm a closet writer. I always think of like, I would love to write a web series. You know, I, I think it's a great medium for people to get out there and have more control and do what they want. And, you know, everyone's been saying, if you get a good story, you could do it with your iPhone and people will be intrigued. So I think that, um, you're right, if it could be monetized correctly and it could be, because most people aren't, I don't really have cable. I, I look at things online, you look at Netflix, you know, even Netflix series that are going on. So I think it's a fantastic media for, you know, anybody trying to get, in. and I also heard that studios are looking into that, like studios have branches that they're really seeking, you know, new media and stuff, so... It's pretty awesome. For me as an actress to do, you know, I mean, I lived off of independent films, so it could be done. But, you know, off of independent films, are you running down to go buy yourself a house? No, you're paying your rent and hopefully you get the proper people to like it and you can, you know, pay your next rent, you know, because no, independent filmmaking is not necessarily for me or for actresses 
you know, highly lucrative. You know, you, 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 you make, you know, who knows and who knows who's doing your contract. But it's more or less for you to, you, you to work with amazing creative people and like Barry, you know, working with, you know, Sheldon, working with, you know, great, great people. There's more opportunities, you know, I'm just, you just wait for your right role, you know, and, and when you do do films like that, it does put you in a category where you can, um, or put you in a, even financially, a space where you can, you know, wait for your right role and, and, and you know, be more creative. So it did, it, it gave me, I met some amazing people like Bill Condon and, you know, I met uh, some of my closest friends now from the film so yeah it, it is one of those things that you're like wow these doors do open for you it's just a matter of finding you know your door your right door your right vehicle